Circling approaches are allowed for many operators, but allowed or legal doesn't always mean wise. These visual maneuvers demand precise control at low altitude, often in marginal conditions in unfamiliar environments. They're unforgiving when rushed and can deteriorate quickly if flown without discipline. In this session, we'll look at two fatal examples, review the current FAA guidance and UPRT insights, and close with a direct look at why stall and upset prevention, not recovery, may be your only defense when things go wrong in a circling maneuver. First, on May 15, 2017 in Teterboro, New Jersey, a Learjet 35A operating under Part 135 attempted a circling approach to Runway 1 following an RNAV GPS approach to Runway 6. The crew failed to brief the approach, deviated from SOPs, and descended below MDA without reliable visual cues. During the turn toward the runway, the aircraft stalled and impacted a commercial building. Both pilots were killed. The NTSB concluded the pilot in command's attempt to salvage an unstabilized visual approach resulted in an aerodynamic stall at low altitude. Second, on July 26, 2021, in Truckee, California, a Challenger 605 operating under Part 91 was cleared for the RNAV approach to Runway 20, but elected to circle to Runway 11. No circling briefing was conducted. During the circling maneuver, airspeed control broke down, flap settings were non-standard, and spoilers were deployed. The aircraft entered a steep descending turn inside the protected radius and stalled. All six on board were killed. The NTSB cited the first officer's improper decision to continue an unstabilized approach and the captain's failure to intervene leading to a left-wing stall and train impact. The Instrument Procedures Handbook, Chapter 4, Visual Segment, states that a circling approach is a visual maneuver conducted after an instrument approach when a straight-in landing isn't practical or possible. The maneuver must be conducted within a defined protected area to ensure obstacle clearance. Obstacle clearance is only guaranteed within a defined radius based on aircraft category. For a Category C aircraft, for example, that radius increased from 1.7 to 2.7 nautical miles under revised TERPS criteria in 2012 to accommodate higher true airspeeds and turn radii. Descent below MDA isn't authorized until the aircraft is in a position to make a normal descent to landing. According to both the Instrument Procedures Handbook, Chapter 4, and the Aeronautical Information Manual, the AIM, Chapter 5, the aircraft must be in landing configuration, on speed, aligned with the intended runway, and able to descend using normal maneuvers with the runway environment clearly in sight. Attempting a steep, rushed, or misaligned base to final turn erodes or eliminates the very margins these procedures are designed to protect. The decision to circle must be deliberate, not assumed. If wind, terrain, runway alignment, or pilot readiness raise any doubts, a straight-in approach or a diversion is the safer option. Even experienced pilots have misjudged this maneuver fatally, as we just discussed. From an upset prevention recovery training or stall prevention recovery training standpoint, escalation often follows a predictable pattern. The aircraft is tight to the airport, compressed by low altitude and close geometry. To keep the runway in sight and remain within protected airspace, the crew elects to continue. Approaching the base leg, the standard 30-degree bank turn is not getting them on course. In response, the pilot adds inside rudder with the opposite aileron and aft elevator to stop the overbank and nose drop. The result? A skidding cross-controlled turn. Often, the overshoot of final approach continues. The recent illusion of tightening the turn from the inside rudder prompts more rudder, more elevator, further degrading margins and energy. The slip skid indicator shows the ball hard to the outside of the turn, the high wing. The aircraft is deeply uncoordinated and energy depleted and depleting. This moment may be the last opportunity for the crew and passengers to survive. Enter stall upset prevention. Get off the rudder. Neutralize the controls back to coordinated flight. It initiate a go-around, which gets harder and harder as this approach continues. If instead the crew decides to continue, the aircraft departs in a skidded turn stall rolling sharply toward the inverted. Now at typical circling altitudes at this point, there is often insufficient time or altitude left to recover even with immediate expert correct inputs. This is the classic cross-control skidded turn stall, a killer that plagues every part of fixed-wing aviation. Power-stabilized skid increases stall speed, rapidly drains kinetic energy, and typically generates a powerful roll moment towards inverted flight, even in jets. 
Conversely, while not necessarily the topic of this particular situation, the slip, on the other hand, a valid and effective flight condition and a diversity of conditions, are generally stall spin resistant and tend to roll upright at the stall. Skids? Not so much. In fact, not at all. Typically right to inverted with little warning, especially when the pilot is visually fixated on the runway trying to make it work. It just doesn't. Circling approaches aren't just about technique, they're about bandwidth. The Flight Safety Foundation's Practical Guide to Flight Path Monitoring identifies final approach with lateral and vertical flight path changes underway simultaneously, particularly at low altitude, as a high-risk area of vulnerability. These are phases of flight where workload spikes, decision-making is compressed, and margins collapse. Fatal skidded turn traffic pattern stalls are not theoretical. Real-world data confirms the reality of skidded turn as an underappreciated and often misinterpreted flight condition. So to assure every pilot in control, pilots must understand that stall upset and prevention may not just be a layer of defense, it may be the only last line of defense available to save your life. So as we wrap up, circling isn't about being current necessarily, it's about being ready. The maneuver is unforgiving, and sometimes the best decision is made at the top of descent by choosing not to circle at all. Be sure you brief, and brief with intent. Think threat forward. What makes this approach riskier? And what countermeasures will we execute if those risks manifest themselves? Every approach begins with a decision. Make that decision deliberate. Know the margins. Stay clear of the aerodynamic engines through disciplined judgment. And if the aircraft ends up there, or someone puts you there, an early go-around decision must already be part of the plan. Because staying alive isn't luck, it's leadership. And you got this.